Welcome to Santa Monica Island in the rebuilt California Key. Hello, this is Chris Bratt from Eurogamer, joined by Cliff Lezinski, and we're here to talk about Lawbreakers. Darn right, we saying. Are. Your game's real fast, man. Yeah. I don't know if you've noticed. It's actually, uh, since we did our first uh, streams, it's actually even a little bit faster. True. Yeah, well, the thing was, is, you know, having people like Total Biscuit and people actually play the game and be hands on, mm -hmm. uh, we found that, like, the larger characters, you know, a little bit too slow. And right. It wasn't necessarily that they were physically that much slower than the other characters, it's the fact that they were taller, you know, Kronos and Bombshell. Yep. So, it, and naturally, in, in an FPS like this, if the camera's higher, the player feels like he's moving slower. Right, so okay, so it's, you need a lot of little tunes with FOV and with, with okay. bump, bumping up speed just based on just, you know, the pre-alpha alone. So. Cool. Well, it seems to work from what, from what I played briefly. Um, and, yeah, specifically, it, it, it feels like a, a PC game. It feels like one that you need a mouse and keyboard for. Now, I know at the moment you, uh, you're a Steam exclusive, um, but you're not completely, um, like, Counting out the fact that it might go to console one day. What, what, what do you? I, I wouldn't what do you feel rule it out. I mean, you know, we like money and we like to keep the lights on. Sure. You know, and Sony and Microsoft need games, so you know, we're we've talked to them a little bit. Um, but it's one of those things we're not going to do this the, the port ourselves. Right. The other thing is you need a partner since this is going to be a living product. Mm -hmm. Where hopefully it goes on for years. Where there, you know, if we do the updates in the PC, the console version is going to need to get updated. As right, well. right, right. So as it's going to keep going. Um, and, but the thing about the controller is that it's going to be tricky. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've played it around with the, with the controller a little bit. And the thing is, is if we get around to doing console ports, I don't want to do crossplay. Right. Like I've seen some, some people think that's like the holy grail for like a lot of games, and I'm like, no. I just like if you have somebody with a keyboard and a mouse versus somebody with a controller, I'm sorry, the the person with the keyboard and the mouse is gonna win nine times sure. out of ten. And uh, with Lawbreakers specifically, it's the uh, the verticality means that you need to be able to move and you, like react you really very need quickly. To be, like always looking around, always sure. checking your six and everything like that. You know, I, I saw the new. Uh, Gears of War demo today, I snuck mm -hmm. in there, front and center. Of course. Uh, you know, pulled pull my, my strings and connections. <laughs> it looks really good. I think they're doing a great job with it. Um, but it reminded me of how, you know, non-vertical a game like Gears yep. is. And I think this game is kind of the direct result of having worked on Gears for so long. Mm -hmm. It's like this game is a lot more colorful. This game is back to first person. <laughs> this game's all about, it's not stop and pop. It's yeah. like go and flow. Ooh, that's good. I just came up nice. with that. Nice, that's good. And like it. it's, it's, it's really vertical and so mm -hmm. that's kind of what we're going for with this yeah well we had a kind of brief tutorial before we played and uh one of the things that when you guys mentioned is the moment you realize you can get in the air and above other people everyone starts doing it because that's how you need to play so yeah well the, the other thing we're looking at is the fact that you know will we actually keep the iron sights in the game it's debatable right now because okay. when people are streaming you know when you give the players the ability to play the game the exact same way as another game mm -hmm. they play it like destiny or call of duty they sure, hang sure. back with iron sights and they're zooming in and we don't want to be a snipey type game yeah so we want people to be in the middle like you know uh, that boiling mess of low gravity or just kind of like coming at them from above and, and engaging instead of actually hanging back. So that's the kind of game we're going for. Cool. Uh, you mentioned briefly uh, that you're thinking about the lifespan of this game and you want it to be uh, for this come. What, what? I'm not ready to re-retire. Okay, so well, if Little Breakers is a success at launch, what? How do you see the the years like following that? How, well, we, how does that play out? If it's a success out? at launch, um, which we're not announcing the date, you know, yep. maybe when it's still warm in the states, to, it remains to be seen. Uh, the game development's dark art. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of those things that we're gonna have to have staff up a little bit. Yep. You know, get a little bit bigger than sixty five, which is gonna hurt me a little bit. But <laughs> hopefully, it's not gonna have, get, have to get to hundred. But it would be a good problem to have. Okay. But we're gonna yeah. have to have one strike team that's responsible for just constant fixes, updates, balance, all that sure. kind of stuff, keeping the damn game running for the, the, people, the game that people pay good money for, as well as the future content team that's making new maps, new characters, sure. and all sorts of other things. And you know, once you purchase this game, and again, it's not free to play, we're looking at 20 to $40 range uh, US. Mm -hmm. Um, it's one of those things, uh, I lost my, totally lost my train of thought. Uh, oh yeah, you need to continue to promise this content, and this content will always be free in regards to the new, new classes, the new maps. Excellent, cool. That, that puts a lot of... Uh, we, don't, we don't want to segment our community. You sure. know, the old way was to do DLC, so then you couldn't play the game unless you had the DLC, or you, people would be in either server. Matchmaking in a highly skill-based game is a tricky enough thing to do without adding in that extra X factor. So if at the moment you're thinking about a uh, you know, $20 to $40 price point for launch, um, how do you... How do you fund that extra development afterwards? Like, well, what does Lawbreakers do to bring more money in to make sure those changes you happen? You have a fun and interesting microtransaction system that okay. people are happy to do. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not saying it's gonna be a one-to-one -one with CSGO. I don't like, once I've spent money on a game, I don't like spending more money on it inside. It feels weird, sure. but something has to justify keeping the lights on and, and you know, everybody needs, still needs to eat feed their darn kids. CSGO's key crate system is really a brilliant example. Yep. I'm not saying we're doing that per se, but like, if I get a crate, and I can't open it, I'm buying the, I'm buying the keys. Right. Like I've done that multiple times in that game and I'm usually happy with what I have or I can break it down into something else that can contribute to, it's basically making your own economy within the game for that. You know, if you charge $60 for your game and then on top of that have a crate system, 
Sure. And, and that kind of stuff is would be cosmetic, right? The, yeah, absolutely. Things, yeah, you don't nothing that impacts gameplay. No, it's not going to be paid away. I promise. Excellent. Good. Um, I, one thing that I'm sure you you're kind of maybe frustrated about talking about at this stage, but um, whenever Lawbreakers comes up, people make that comparison to Overwatch yeah, because it's just come out, and you know there are some similar ideas there. Um, is that frustrating from your perspective? Well, the human brain, I call it pattern match recognition or pattern match dismissal, where sure. people, when they see something, they immediately want to put it in a bucket with something else. And there is some overlap in regards to the fact that we have characters and guns and weapons and whatnot, but the thing is, is our art style is a little bit more gritty. Mm -hmm. There's this very kind of uh, super bright colors, almost anime-ish looking characters in certain instances. Uh, they're going for like bazillion different characters. We're going initially with less is more and we're ramping up sure. to find our balance. And th them as a game are so much rock, paper, scissors. Mm -hmm. And for us, you know, if I come around the corner in Overwatch and I have the wrong character and someone else has the right character in that rock, paper, scissors match, I'm, I'm dead. Okay. Like, I don't, I don't stand a chance. For us, at least, and also in Overwatch, most of the time, if I ever enter a room with you know four or five, six people on the other team, you know, I, I don't really stand a chance at actually taking them all out. Okay. If you're really good at this game with any of the different roles and classes, you can take out an entire team. And it's not every character is very useful just in different situations. It's not you're not penalized by what you select when you spawn. Cool. Is that a philosophy that's going to carry on with future characters as well? Then the, yeah, that's as, how as you much want as humanly act. possible. And you know, one of our core pillars is to be a shooter. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of those things. Our hitboxes are all accurate one to one with the characters. You know, sure. and it's and these are the core things I think that core players really care about. You know, it's we're not going to freeze the players. You know, we're not going to allow them to be shot through walls or anything like that. And we're not going to stun them. You know, we may slow them down in some instances, but and all that stuff works well in the context of Overwatch, but it's not us. Okay, you wanted to keep feeling quick, keep feeling like a shooter. Yeah, well, right. you know, it's one of those things. If you're ever flowing through a game like this, especially because you know we have a little bit of that nice momentum when you come out of the gravity zone, you can jump and kind of you know sure. sk uh, skate along a little bit. The second you you know if you it'd be like if you're just going for a jog and somebody just suddenly put a, a, a thousand pound weight in your feet and you just have to stop there. You're like, ah, my sense of flow gets interrupted. Mm -hmm. And for me as a, an FPS player, I'm not a huge fan of that type of thing, and so I can promise we're not going to do it. Cool. Um, and we, so there isn't a release date yet, uh, but what can we expect to see from Lawbreakers over the next few months? The alpha is the, the, the public alpha is hitting on the 18th. Okay. You can sign up at Lawbreakers.com. It's on Steam. Start preloading uh, right now on the 16th, actually. So you're not just sitting there day of going, oh, I guess I'm mm -hmm. just going to wait for this thing to download. Um, and initially, we're shipping with our capture the battery mode called Overcharge, right. uh, the Grand View Grand Canyon map. The four main classes, and the, again, the game's narrative is asymmetrical, but the game's gameplay is symmetrical. Mm -hmm. And then in early July, we're going to roll out our new map, Promenade, which is my reimagining of Southern California, as well as Turf War, which is kind of our three-point, kind of fast domination, sure. yeah. uh, capture the point mode. Yep, and that's all coming with the alpha. Uh, yep. That's a bit. And it is actually an alpha, right? This is something that you're going to be looking at feedback and being like, okay, well, now we can tweak this. I mean, the team was already agonizing over like the stuff Total Biscuit said about the damn game, to a fault. So I had to tell everybody, like, stay the course, you know, let's not knee-jerk <laughs> with things. Sure. You know, take in consideration what the consensus is, look at the data, and then nudge. You know, don't just throw the baby out with the bathwater and whatnot. Um, and so it's one of those things, you know, there's going to be parts of this game that are going to be broken. Mm -hmm. There's going to be crashes. There's going to be messed up stuff. And that's why we're doing this, so that people can actually, like, make the game with us, as I set out to do two years ago, now that we can finally do that. Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time, Cliff. Thank and you. we, uh, we're avoiding handshakes, apparently. We're, we're fist bumps. So we're going to fist bumps. All right. Cool. cool. Excellent.